So we talked about earth, and, and I said that earth is food. Earth is food. And we talked last night about water, and we said water is, of course, water and your blood. And if we can take water, and we can take food, and we can bring them together, food and water, we can feed ourselves with those elements. We can bring those elements into our lives. So this is really about bringing the elements back into our lives. We've been isolated from the elements for a long time. We've been actually living in little bubbles. Like when the elements get into our homes, people kind of freak out, try to get them back out, right? Try to plaster it up, try to like cook off the air, try to like chemically treat the water. It's always trying to like af affect the elements because we're, we're, we've been like living like, like spacemen in bubbles. You can see this because you see, like you go out into the elements and people think they need like a backpack this big and like all this high tech expensive gear, right? They look like astronauts going hiking. Like we could go right to some of these mountains and the people in the mountains would look like astronauts. Like as if they don't, they can't be integrated into the elements, right? Like squirrels, no backpack. <laughs> the crows around town, no backpack. They're integrated into the elements, right? So we can get integrated into the elements. And then what we need is an approach where we can bring that into our lives, because of course we're not all going to go become naked apes. We're going to live here, and we want to bring a balance of the life that we've created in society and in culture with also this information about the elements. And what elixir craft is, is, is my distillation, if you will, of my experiences in herbalism. And what happened was basically I realized that modern herbalism was a joke. This doesn't really work that good. And if it did work that good, more people would be doing it. But the way it's being taught, this doesn't work. Now, herbalism's great, but the way it's being taught doesn't really work. And what it is is a form of allopathy. You guys know what allopathy is? Allopathic medicine? That's the style of medicine that treats symptoms. And that's what modern medicine is. It's allopathy. So what happens is you have a symptom, and then they find something that will defeat the symptom. So you have a runny nose, and they, they give you a substance that will clog the nose back up. Does that make sense? Whereas some other medical systems work differently. They go, if you have a runny nose, they're going to give you something that gives you a runny nose. Because they feel if something's running out, then let's increase that and try to get it all out. So there's different approaches. Homeopathy tries to give you something that causes the same thing that you're dealing with. So there's different approaches. Allopathy is just one. And modern herbalism is just a, a plant-based version of what modern medical doctors do. And the way it's taught today is you go to a school who, who teaches you different herbs um, you memorize them, and then you repeat that back. I don't really like that system. I, I feel like what it does is you're always behind the ball. It's always like you're waiting for a symptom to crop up, and then you treat the symptom. I learned then about Chinese tonic herbalism, which I find amazing. Who's heard that term, tonic? It's interesting. Well, we're going to be talking about liquid drinks today. You guys ever notice that sodas used to be called tonics? Right? Tonic? Because originally all the tonic sodas were liquid elixirs, and they were good for you. So we had ginger ale. What was ginger ale? It was car you guys know there's naturally carbonated springs on Earth? There's springs where you go and there's naturally, they're carbonated. I've been to lots of them. That would be like carbonated spring water with ginger juice in it. That's ginger ale. That was really good for you. And I, you know, it settles the stomach. And I remember as a kid, my mom being like, oh, you got a stomachache, well, drink some ginger ale. And it's like corn syrup, ginger flavor, carbon. <laughs> it doesn't work anymore, huh? Um, but originally it did. Or how about, the, what's the big one on the earth who's dominated the planet? Coca? Coca. Cola. 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 Yeah. Coca. Cola. Now, I don't know if you've ever chewed coca, but that's an amazing plant. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> and it's a tonic herb. And cola is an African plant, a nut. It's related to cacao. It's got a lot of caffeine in it. Mm -hmm. and, and coca <clears throat> has 19 alkaloids in it. And if you take those two plants and you do like what we're going to do, put them in the blender with some carbonated water and something sweet like some honey, and you create your own Coca-Cola, which I've done, that's got kicked. That was a good drink. That was a good drink, right? Um, but the, we've lost our ways by demanding cheap, right? Because a lot of people out there, not the people in this room, obviously you wouldn't be here, but people out there are demanding cheap, like they want the cheapest stuff. And if you want cheap stuff, you get it, and it's no longer going to be the good thing. So, but all those sodas, the tonics, were tonic. That was a liquid elixir. What I, what I came across was, I, I finally was like, what is tonic? I would read in herbalism, something's tonifying. Like, what does that mean? What's a tonic? A tonic is an herb that you can take every day because it's not medicinal. It's adaptogenic. 
what it does is tones your organ systems in the same way that going to the gym and being gentle at the gym tones your muscles. Right? Some kind of workouts, you could go to the gym and you could do big muscle-headed workouts that don't tone your body, they tear your body apart and make you grow and get big and muscly, right? But some workouts tone you, you become toned. You could do that workout every day and it's always good for you. Well, there's herbs that do that. They tonify the body. And you can take them every day because they're not medicinal. Here's the thing, medicinal herbs over time will poison you. Herbalism is really the study of poison. So today you're learning elixir craft, we could subtitle that the poison path. We could, we could definitely subtitle that The Poison Path. I learned that from a, an author named Dale Pendell, who's fantastic if you're interested in more of that. His three books are profound. Um, it's The Poison Path. Now, tonic herbs are not poisonous. Now, here's what the Chinese Taoist immortalists came up with. So you've got these characters, the Taoist immortalists. They were like roaming the hillsides and mountains of China, working with the herbs and doing the Qigong longevity practice and seeing how long they could extend their lives. Some of them did some pretty profound things. A lot of the knowledge we have today comes down from them. They said, why would you always treat symptoms when you could just find the, the top best tonics and just take those? Then you'd always be healthy so you never had to treat your symptoms. Does that make sense? So kind of that idea really makes sense to me. So a lot of what we're going to be focused on today is making tonics. Now the term elixir means a liquid preparation that's a vehicle for medicine, but that's usually sweet and tastes good. So another thing that I experienced was going around the world trying different, you guys heard the term bitter medicine, people talk about bitter medicine, or if you've ever been part of any of the plant-based shaman paths, some of the preparations that maybe the Weechals do in, in the, with the peyote cactus, or the ayahuasca cat, uh, vine from South America, these medicinal tonic drinks that people use in different parts of the world, they taste bad. They taste bad. And then I saw, I was like, what's up with that? Haven't they figured out after all this time how to make them taste good? I guess not. And then I got into the superfood thing. And what I saw was people didn't have a structure. They just started throwing things in the blender. And they were trying to eat these powders like we have here. Just going to eat them. And I was like, I got to do something with this. So I sought out to take the best of herbalism, the best of superfood nutrition, what I learned from the shamanic path, what I learned about food, what I learned about all these different paths and combine it into what I call elixir craft, which is really the craft of making liquid-based foods, drinks, medicines. I was heavily influenced by the idea that, that um, you know, Hippocrates gave us, which was let food be your medicine and medicine be your food. Which means that if you're going to treat yourself, and all of us have stuff we need to treat, some people are dealing with immune system stuff, some people are dealing with fungal overload. Some people are dealing with cancer. Some people are dealing with uh, hormonal issues. Whatever it is you're dealing with, you need to treat yourself. But if you're going to let food be your medicine and medicine be your food, that means you don't want to be like taking a bunch of herbs, and that's your medicine, and then eating your diet. You want to try to combine them. That's the oldest, some of the oldest medical wisdom we have. Does that make sense? 